What the hell is this? Where do you find yuca. this? This with is hard. No, that I usually find um, with the bananas. <laughs> and the bananas? Yeah, with okay. the bananas, and then there's See, other. I'm glad we did this. All right, so we're going to go over our four favorite root vegetables. Now, root vegetables are very important for our diet. They help slow down our digestion a little bit so the rest of the stuff that we eat can get digested. So, root vegetables are, what is this, Maureen? That is a yucca. This is a yucca? Okay, so that's a yucca. Sweet potato. Sweet potato, I know that one. <laughs> Beets. Beets. That is a turnip. And a turnip. All right, so where do you end up finding these at the grocery store? All in the same place or are they spread out? Um, because this is a sweet potato, but it's not a potato. It is not a potato. Right, so that's a big difference. It's a yeah. yam, isn't it? A yam the same thing or are they a little different? Yams are a little bit different. Okay, but, they're but it's just, not a potato. No, it's a root vegetable. But they are with the potatoes? They are with the potatoes. See, super confusing. I know. All right, so this thing. The turnip and the beets you can usually find together. Okay. In like a root vegetable area, depending on your store. What the hell is this? Where do it's you find yuca. this? This with is hard. Turnip? No, that I usually find um, with the bananas. <laughs> and, the bananas? Yeah, with okay. the bananas. And then there's See, other. See, I'm glad we did this. All right, so it's with the bananas. With the bananas and the plantains and. The... Okay, so plantain is another good one to like. Yes. Okay. They didn't, they didn't have any at the store. I'm sorry. All right. So now let's give us some quick meals that you feel like are our favorites to utilize these each for. Okay. Do you want me to start with the yeah, yuca? Yeah. Start with the yuca. So the yuca, you have to peel all this waxy skin off. And then typically if you slice it into like French fry shapes, yep. boil them for 10 minutes and then roast them in the oven with olive oil, salt, pepper, whatever seasonings you like, you've got yourself some great healthy alternatives to french fries nice we I so like we those. yeah we eat these a lot with like if we make flatbreads or pizzas we put them on the side we put them on the side sweet potato we live and die by sweet potatoes yeah the okinawas in japan they their entire older generation lived off of sweet potatoes and they are some of the healthiest people on the planet we eat these for breakfast with eggs or just like with beans or something we make a lot we're having this week sweet potato bowls yeah for dinner Sometimes they're Loaded sweet. Loaded sweet potatoes? Yep. We put stuff in. You'll actually make tacos with the sweet potato as the, like the shell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd actually also use these, remember? We, um, if we slice them and roast them and we use them as like a hot dog bun. Yep, yep. With some the mustard. Kids like those too. Those are really good. All right. Beets. I love beets. I Beets have grown on me. You're on the beet bandwagon now. Yeah. Um, these I like to just put in salads. Okay. So this is a great in a green salad with maybe some figs and some feta and a nice balsamic dressing. Delicious. Cool. They're also just good sliced. The boys like them that way. Matthew really likes the golden ones. Golden beets? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then turnip. I'm going to be honest. I don't. We don't have a lot of turnip. We don't eat a lot of turnip, but you asked me to get one, so I got one. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but they can be... A potato replacement. I just particularly don't care for the taste. How would you cook them? You could. The recipes that you've seen. Well, we have had them. So you can dice them and boil them and then mash them up for like a mashed turnip. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you put in um, like a carrot or parsnip with it, it takes a little bit of the bitterness of the turnip out. Okay. And gives it a little bit of a different um, flavor. But they're not one of our favorites. But I've used them in like a potato salad too. Instead of the potato? Instead of the potato. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so the reason we wanted to put these aside and show you root vegetables is because these are what humans really lived off of back in the day, right? If we competed with other animals for food, the green leafy stuff that grew outside, these are Brussels sprouts, they grew outside of the ground, we'd then compete with rabbits, gophers, yeah. uh, bulls, and stuff like that. They would pick at these while these were left under the ground and you have to dig them out. So we would go around as humans, we would walk around, we would see partially eaten vet outside vegetables from animals and then we would go in and we would dig out the root and we would live off of the root vegetables. The root, as opposed to? As opposed to the green leafy. We would take the green leafy that we, that we could find and we would pair it with the root, 
right? And that allows us to slow down the digestion with the root vegetable and then extract all of the nice healthy nutrients out of the green leafies that we can find as well. But uh, I know that a lot of nutritionists and a lot of uh, science over the last, I don't know, like 20 years ago, they felt like the bad carbs. They didn't want yeah. to, they wanted to lower our carbs. So these guys got villainized a lot and we don't need to be scared of them anymore, yeah. right? These are things that are great for our gut microbiome and they slow down the digestive process so that our healthy nutrients can be extracted from the cruciferous green leafy stuff that we end up eating. Can I say one thing about this? Tell me. Before I forget? Yep. We talked about this. A lot of your resistant starches, especially sweet potatoes and So something. resistant starches, resistant to digestion, right? So it's slower digested. Yep. yep. So a lot, most of these are resistant starches. There's some grains that are too, but the key is when you cook these, you actually remove the heat takes away the resistant starch. Yep. So in order to get that back in to the plant or the vegetable, um, you want to cook these ahead of time if you can let them cool because that builds that resistance yep. back up and then you can reheat them and eat them. Cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, what, you want to get the maximum health benefit from yeah. the food that you're eating. Yep. Yep. And this is another reason an, an article I wrote back a year or so ago was about, um, the cuisine extinction and how these great cultures had cuisines where they would, we, and we don't as Americans, the older generations, they had, okay, you eat this with this always 100% of the time, they would make a meal and it would have this and this in it. Yep. Because we'd want to get everything out of this, this would slow it down so our digestive system could process this as best as possible. Nowadays, we look online and we say, what's healthy for us? Broccoli. And we think that eating a stock of broccoli is great. But there's a huge amount of benefit that comes from the ability to slow it down with those resistant starches, those fibrous type uh, foods, okay? Yeah. Yeah. To pair them with. Yep. And that's why, we have lost a huge ability and passing down from generation to generation the approach of finding the foods to pair together and making them all together in, in terms of a meal. Okay, I hope this was helpful.